Hi guys, today it's the 15th of February 2021. Today I'm going to Esther 1 to 5, Proverbs 15, and Psalm 48. Let's get started. King Xerxes ruled over the 127 territories in his kingdom. They reached from India all the way to Kush. Here's what happened during the time Xerxes ruled over the whole Persian kingdom. <clears throat> He was ruling from his royal throne in the fort of Susa. In the third year of his rule, King Xerxes gave a feast. There was for all his nobles and officials. The military leaders of Persia and Media were there. So were the princes and nobles of the territories he ruled over. Every day for 180 days, he showed his guests the great wealth of his kingdom. He also showed them how glorious his kingdom was. When those days were over, the king gave another feast. It lasted for seven days. He was held in the garden of the king's courtyard. He was for all the people who lived in the fort of Susa. Everyone from the least important person to the most important was invited. The garden was decorated with white and blue linen banners. They hung from ropes that were made out of white linen and purple cloths. The ropes were connected to silver rings on marble pillars. There were gold and, <coughs> and silver. There were gold and silver couches in the garden. There, they were placed on a floor that was made out of small stones. The floor had purple crystal, marble, mother of pearl, and other stones of great value. Royal wine was served in gold cups. Each cup was different from all the others. There was plenty of wine. The king always provided as much as his guests wanted. He commanded that they should be allowed to drink as much or as little as they wished. He directed all his servants to give his guests what they asked for. King Vashti, Queen Vashti also gave a feast. Only women were invited. It was held in the royal palace of King Xerxes. On the seventh day, Xerxes was in a good mood because he had drunk a lot, of, a lot of wine. So he gave a command to the servant officials who served it. There were Mehuman, Biztha, Harbinah, Bigtha, Bagtha, Zetha, and Carcass. King Xerxes told them to bring Queen Vashti to him. He wanted her to come wearing her royal coat. He wanted to show off her beauty to the people and nobles. She was lovely to look at. The attendants told Queen Vashti what the king had ordered her to do, but she refused to come. So the king became very angry. So it was the king, king's practice to ask for advice about matters of law and affairs. So he spoke with the wise men who understood what was going on at that time. They were the men closest to the king. Their names were Kashana, Shetha, Admatha, Tarshish, Meres, Marsana, and Mimikul. They were the seven nobles of Persia and Media. They were the king's special advisors and the most important men in the kingdom. You know the law, the king said. What should I do to Queen Vashti? She hasn't obeyed my command. The officials told her what I ordered her to do, didn't they? Then Mimikin gave a reply to the king and the nobles. He said, Queen Vashti has done what is wrong, but she didn't do it only against you, King Sertus. She did it against she did it also against all the nobles, and she did it against the people and all the territories you rule over. All the world will hear about what the queen has done. Then they won't respect their husbands. They say Queen Xerxes commanded Queen Vashti to be brought in, but she wouldn't come. Here's what will start today. The leading women in Persia and media who have heard about the queen's actions will act in the same way. They'll disobey all your nobles, just as she disobeyed you. They won't have any respect for their husbands. If they, they won't honor them. So if it pleases you, send her a royal order. Let it be written in the law, down in the laws of Persia and me. Those laws can never be changed. Let the royal order say that Vashti can never see you again. I still let her position as queen be given to someone who is better than she is. And let your order be announced all through your entire kingdom. <laughs> then all women will have respect for their husbands, from the least important to the most important. The king and his nobles were pleased with that advice. <laughs> so did so he did what Mimikin had suggested. The king sent message, messages out to every territory in the king. He sent them to every territory. <laughs> It is certain writing. He sent them to every nation in his own language. The messages announced that every man should rule over his own family, using his own language. <laughs> Later, the great anger of Queen Xerxes calmed down. Then he remembered what he had done. He also remembered the royal order he had sent out concerning him. At that time, the king's personal attendants made a suggestion. They said, King Xerxes, let a search be made for some beautiful young virgins. Appoint some officials in every territory 
Ever in your kingdom. Have they bring all these beautiful white young women into the fort of Susa? Put them in a special place where the virgins stay. He then put he guy in charge of the he's the official reception. He's in charge of the work. Let beauty and care be given to the new group of women. Then the then let the young woman who pleases you become the most become a queen in Vashti's place. The king liked their advice, so he followed it. There was a Jew living in the fort of Susa. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. His name was Mordecai. He was the son of Je. Jair was the son of Shimea. Shimea was the son of Kish. Nebuchadnezzar had forced Mordecai to leave Jerusalem. He was among the prisoners who were carried off, along with Jehoiachin. Jehoiachin had been king of Judah. Nebuchadnezzar was king of Baal. Mordecai had a cousin named Hadassah. He had raised her because he, because she didn't have a father or mother. Hadassah was a, a called Esther. She was a, she had a lovely figure and was very beautiful. Mordecai had adopted her as his own daughter. She had done it when her father and mother died. After the king's order and all burners, the <coughs> many young men, women were brought to the fort of Susa. He guy was put in charge of it. Esther was also taken to the king's palace. He, she was put under the control of he guy. She was in, he was in charge of the place where the virgin stayed. Esther pleased him. He showed her how happy he was with her. And right away, he provided her with beauty with her beauty, care, and special food. He appointed some female attendants to help her. They were chosen from the king's palace. He moved her and her attendants into the best part of the place where the virgin stayed. Esther hadn't told anyone who her people were. She hadn't talked about her family. That's because Mordecai had told her not to. Mordecai tried to find out how Esther was getting along. He wanted to know what was happening to her. So he walked back and forth near the courtyard by the place where the virgins stay. He did it every day. Each young woman had to complete 12 months of beauty care. They used oil of merit for six months, and they used perfume and makeup for the other six months. The virgins tried to go into Jerusalem. To King Xerxes could only could come only after a full 12 months had passed. And here's how she would go to the king. She would be given anything she wanted from the place where the virgin stayed. She could take her with her to the king's palace. In the evening, she would go there. In the morning, she would leave. Then she would go to the special place where the king's concubine stayed. She would be put under the control of Shash Shashkaz. She was the king's official who was in charge of the concubines. She would never return to the king unless he was pleased with her. He had to circle her by name before she could go to him again. What if I had adopted Esther? Yes, uh, she had been the daughter of his uncle Abihail. Her turn came in to go to the king. <clears throat> she only asked for what he guy suggested. He was the king's official who was in charge of the place where the virgin stayed. Everyone who saw Esther was pleased with her. She was taken to King Texas in the royal house, who was now the tenth one. That was the month of Tiber. It was the seventh year of the rule of Xerxes. The king liked Esther more than he liked any of the other women. She pleased him more than any of the other virgins. So he put a crown, sorry, he put a royal crown on her. He made a queen in Vashti's place. Then the king gave a feast on Esther. All his neighbors and officials were invited. He announced a holiday to all through the territories he ruled over. He freely gave many gifts in keeping with his royal wealth. The virgins were gathered together a second night. At that time, Mordecai was sitting at the palace gate. Esther had kept her family history a secret. She hadn't told anyone who her people were. Mordecai had told her not to. She continued to follow his direction. That's what she had always done when he was bringing her up. Big Thana and Teresh were two of the king's officers. They got at the door of the royal palace. They became angry with King Xerxes, so they decided to come. They made their evil plans while Mordecai was sitting at the palace gate. So Mordecai found out about it and told Queen Esther. Then she reported it to the king. She told him that Mordecai had uncovered the plans against her. Some people checked Esther's report, and they found that it was true. So the two officials were put to death. Then poles were stuck through them. They were set up where people could see them. All of that was written in the official record. It was written down what the king was watching. <laughs> After those events, King Xerxes honored Haman. Haman was the son of Hamadatha. He was the he was from the family line of Agai. The king gave Haman Haman a higher position than he had before. He gave him a seat of honor. It was higher than the positions of 
any of the other noble side. All the Aurora officials at the palace gate got down on their knees. They gave on a tailor. That's because the king had commanded them to do. But Mordecai refused to get down on the seats. He didn't give Haman any honor at all. The Aurora officials at the palace gate asked Mordecai a question. They said, why didn't you obey the king's command? Day after day, they spoke, they spoke to him, but he still refused to obey. So they told Haman about it. They wanted to see whether he would let Mordecai get away with what he was doing. Mordecai had told them he was a Jew. Haman noticed that Mordecai wouldn't get down on his knees. He wouldn't give Haman any honor. So Haman was very angry, but he had found her who Mordecai's people were. So he didn't want to kill only Mordecai. He had to look for a way to destroy all Mordecai's people. They were Jews. He wanted to kill all of them everywhere in the kingdom of Xerxes. The law was cast in front of Haman. So for the law was called Per. It was cast in the first month of the twelfth year that Xerxes was king. The month, that month was called Nisan. The law was cast to choose a day and a month. The month chosen was the twelfth month. That month was called Adar. Then Haman said to King Xerxes, Certain people are scattered among the nations. They live in all the territories in your kingdom. They keep themselves separate from everyone else. These practices are different from the practices of all other people. It, they don't obey your laws. It, it really isn't good for you to put up with them. If it pleases you, give the order to destroy them. I will even add 375 tons of silver to the king's officials for the royal treasures. So the king took his ring off his finger. The ring had a zero steel on it. He gave the ring to Haman. Haman was the son of Hamadatha, the Aga guy. Haman was the enemy of the Jews. Keep the money, the king said to Haman. Do what you want to with those people. The king sent for the royal secretaries. It was the 13th day of the first month. The secretary wrote down all Haman's orders. He wrote them down in the writing of each territory in the kingdom. They used to write them in the language of each nation. <laughs> the orders were sent to the royal officials and to the governors of the territories. And the orders were also sent to the nobles of the nations. The orders were written in the name of King Xerxes himself. And they were stamped with his own official mark. They were carried by messengers. They were sent to all the king's territories. The orders commanded people to destroy, kill, and wipe out all the Jews. That included young old people and old people alike. It included women and children. All the Jews were supposed to be killed on a single day. That day was the 13th day of the 12th month. It was the month of Ada. The orders also commanded people to take everything that belonged to the Jews. A copy of the order had to be sent out as law. It had to be sent to every territory in the kingdom. It had to be announced to the people of every nation, and they would be ready for that day. The king commanded the messengers to go out, as they so they did. The order was sent out from the hall of suits. Then the king and Haman sat down to drink sat down to drink wine. But the people in the city were bewildered. Mordecai found out about everything that he had been done, so he tore his clothes. He put on the rough clothing people wear when they sat. He sat down in ashes. Then he went out into the city. He wept out loud. He cried bitter tears, but he only went as far as the palace gate. That's because no one dressed in that rough clothing was allowed to go through. All the Jews were very sad. They didn't eat anything. They wept and they wept and cried. Many of them put on the rough clothing people wear when they sat. They were lying down in ashes. They did all these things in every territory where the king's order and law had been sent. As this male and, and female attendants came to her, they told her about Mordecai. So she became very troubled. <coughs> so, so she sent him other clothes, clothes, other clothes to wear, but he wouldn't accept them. Then Esther sent for Hathak. He was one of the king's officials. He had been appointed to take care of her. She ordered him to find out what was traveling Mordecai. She wanted to know why he was upset. So Hathak went out to see Mordecai. He was in the open area in front of the palace gate. Mordecai told him everything that had happened to her. He told him about the exact amount of money Haman had promised to add to the royal treasures. He said Haman wanted it to, to be used to pay some men to destroy the Jews. Mordecai also gave Hathak a copy of the order. He commanded people to wipe out the Jews. The order had been what sent from suit. Mordecai told <coughs> Hathak to show the order to Esther. He wanted Hathak to explain it to her. Mordecai told him to tell her and go beg the king for mercy. Mordecai wanted her to make an appeal to the king for her people. Hathak went back and reported to Hathak. Esther, what Mordecai had said. Then Esther directed him to give an answer to Mordecai. <coughs> she told him to say, There's a certain law that everyone knows about. All the king's officials know about it. The people in the rural territories 
No, God. It applies to any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner courtyard without being sent for. It says they must be put to death. They, but there is a way. Suppose the king reaches out his gold scepter to hurt them, then their life will be spared. But thirty days have gone by since the king sent for me. Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, and he sent back an answer. He said, You live in the king's palace. He, he said, but don't think that just because you are there, you'll be the only Jew who will escape. What if you don't say anything at this time? Then help for the Jew and come from another place. But you and your family will die. Who you knows? It's possible that you became queen for a time just like this. Then Esther sent a reply to Mordecai. He said, Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for my benefit. Don't eat or drink anything for three days. Do, don't do it night or day. I and my attendants will fast just as you do. Then I'll go to the king. I do it even though it's against the law. And I and if I have to die, I'll die. So Mordecai went away. He carried out all Esther's directions. On the third day, Esther put on her royal robe. She just stood in the inner courtyard of the palace. It was in front of the king's hall. The king was sitting on his royal throne in the hall. He was facing the entrance. He saw Queen Esther standing in the courtyard. He was pleased with her, so he reached out toward her gold, toward her, the gold scepter that was in her hand. Then Esther approached him. He touched the tip of the scepter. <coughs> the king asked, "What is it, Queen Esther? What do you want? I'll give it to you. I will give, even give you up to half of my kingdom." Esther replied, "King Esther." <coughs> If it pleases you, come to a feast today. I've prepared a for you. Please have Haman come with you. Bring Haman at once, the king said to his servants. <coughs> then we'll do what Esther asked. So the king and Haman went to the feast Esther had prepared. As they were drinking, the, queen, the king asked Esther the same question again. He said, what do you want? I'll give it to you. What do you want me to do for you? I'll even give you up to half of my king. <coughs> Esther replied, Here's what I want. Here's what I want. Here's my appeal to you. I hope you will be pleased to give me what I want. And I hope you will be pleased to listen to my appeal. If you are, I'd like you and Haman to come tomorrow to the feast I'll prepare for you. Then I'll answer your question. <coughs> that day Haman was angry, so he left the palace in a good mood. But then he saw Mordecai at the palace gate. So he noticed that Mordecai didn't stand up when he walked by the stairs. Mordecai didn't have any respect for him at all, so he was very angry with him. But Haman was able to control himself. He went on home. Haman called together his friends and his wife Sarah. He bragged to them about how rich he was. He talked about how many sons he had. He spoke about all the ways the king had gone him. He bragged about how the king had given him a high position. It was higher than it was. It was higher than all the position of any of the other nobles and officials. And that's not all, Haman added. And the only person who Queen Esther invited to come with the queen to to the king to the feast she gave. Now she has invited me along with the king tomorrow. And even all of that doesn't satisfy me. I won't be so I won't be satisfied as long as I see that Jew Mordecai sitting at the palace gate. Haman's wife, Zeresh, and all his have all his friends said to get a pole. In the morning, ask the king to have Mordecai put to death. Have the pole stuck through his body. Set it up at a place where it will be 75 feet above the ground. And then everyone will be able to see it there. Then go to the feast with the king. Have a good time. Haman was delighted that, with that suggestion. So he got the pole ready. Pro, Proverbs 15. A gentle answer turns anger away, but mean words stir up anger. The tongues of wise people use no trial, but the mass of foolish people grow up foolish words. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere. They watch and I saw evil and they took it. A tongue that comes like a tree of life, but a tongue that tells lies produces a broken spirit. A foolish person turns it back on their parents' correction, but anyone who accepts correction shows understanding. The house of those of who do right hold great wealth, but those who do what is wrong and only will. The lips of wise people spread knowledge, but the hearts of foolish people are not honest. The Lord hates the sacrifices of sinful people, but the Prayers of honesty will please him. The Lord hates our sins, love, but he loves those who run after what is right. Our training is our training is in store for anyone who leaves the right path. A person who hates to be corrected will die. <coughs> Death in the grave will I open in front of him. In front of the Lord.
<laughs> so human hearts suddenly lie open to people who make fun of others don't like to be correct, but so they stay away from most people. A happy heart makes a face look cheerful, but a stare heart produces a wicked spirit. A heart that understands what is right looks for not, but the mass of all is cheerful for you and what is foolish. All the days of those who are crushed are filled with pain and suffering, but a cheerful heart enjoys good times and never ends. It is better to have respect for the Lord and to have more than to be rich and have trouble. A few vegetables where there is love are better than the finest wheat where there is hatred. A person with a bad temper stays a conflict, but a person who is patient calms things down. The way of people who don't want to work is blocked with thorns, but the path of honest people is the wise one. A wise one makes his father glad. But a fool's son hates his man. A person who has no sense enjoys doing false things, but a person who is understanding walks straight ahead. Parents fail without good advice. Uh, they succeed when there are many advisors, joyous men are giving the right answer. And how good is a word spoken at the right time? The path of life leads up for those who are wise. It keeps them from going down to the place of the dead. The Lord tears down the proud person's house, but he keeps the widow's property safe. The Lord hates the thoughts of simple people, but he considers kind words to be poor. Pure. Those who always want more bring ruin to their households, but a person who refuses to be paid to lie will live. The hearts of those who do right think about how they will it. The mass of those who do wrong pour at you. The, the Lord is far away from those who do wrong, but he hears the prayers of those who do wrong. The cheerful look of a messenger brings joy to your heart. It good news brings health to your body. Whoever listens to a warning that gives life will be at home among those who are wise. Those who turn away from correction hate themselves. But anyone who accepts correction gains understanding. Wisdom teaches you to have respect for the Lord, so don't be proud if you want to be honest. Psalm 48. The Lord is great. He is really worthy of praise. Praise him in the studio of our God, his holy man. But in Zion is high and beautiful. It brings joy to everyone on earth. Mount Zion is like the highest parts of Mount Safford. It is the king, uh, city of the great king. God is there to keep it safe. He has shown himself to be like a fort to the city. Many kings have joined forces, but then he, they entered Israel together. But when they saw Mount Zion, they were amazed. They ran away in terror, trembling to cold from they felt pain like a woman giving birth. Lord, you destroyed them like ships of Tarshish. They were torn apart by an east wind. What we have heard, we have also seen. We have seen it in the city of the Lord who rules over all. We have seen it in the city of our God. We have heard and seen that God makes it secure forever. God, inside your temple, we think about your faithful love. God, your fame reaches from one end of the earth to the other. So people praise you from one end of the earth to the other. You use your power to do what is right. Man, Zion is filled with joy. The villages of Judah are glad. That's because you judge fairly. Can walk all around Zion. Count its towers. Think carefully about its outer walls. Just look at how safe it is. Then you could tell us people that God keeps them safe. This God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide to the very end. Now that's done, I shall now do the Lord's prayer. Please bow your heads. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. You will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. But give us our debts as you rest and forgive our debtors. Please not lead to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.